Welcome to part two of concept design. In the last video, we looked at all the things you can do to get yourself in the right frame of mind to start generating good ideas. And in this video, we're going to look at how to supercharge our imagination to come up with better ideas and then how to validate those ideas and see if they are good and worth pursuing. And if they're not brilliant ideas, there'll be ideas that at least aren't generic, dull and been done a thousand times before. So what is your imagination? Here's one dictionary definition. The ability or gift of forming such conscious ideas or mental images, especially for the purposes of artistic or intellectual creation. And here's another dictionary definition. An act or process of forming a conscious idea or mental image of something never before wholly perceived in reality by the one forming the images as through a synthesis of remembered elements of previous sensory experiences or ideas as modified by unconscious defense mechanisms. Wow, what a mouthful. And what did it even mean? I'm not sure. But here's the bit that interested me. As through a synthesis of remembered elements of previous sensory experience or ideas as modified by unconscious defense mechanisms. And what did it all mean? This is what it translates to for me. Let's get loads of stuff, stick it into our minds in a great kaleidoscopic mess and half forget it. Then let it simmer away and hey presto, you will have a better imagination. So these are my top tips for how to do that. And number one is simply what we've just been saying. Energy in, energy out. You should go to a little bit of effort to expand your influences and your interests. You should know who these three people are. If you don't, go and find out. Or you can cheat slightly and look in the very last slides where all the pictures are listed. They're all massively important historical creative figures. So you should know who these people are. And of course, you should have a good idea of what is happening in mainstream mass consumer culture. If only to actually avoid making your ideas too similar to the biggest films, games, books, comics of the year. And the reason for that being is that if you've been inspired by Ant-Man to make a game where people shrink, you can bet thousands of other people have seen that film and thought exactly the same thing. So don't just look at what's the most popular, what's the number one smash in any different medium. Go exploring. Look at films that not everybody's watching. Look at, listen to some crazy music. Uh, read some weird comics that aren't really popular at that moment in time. Here, for example, are some books and toys and music that's really inspired me over the last six months. And your list will be totally different. But all these different creative energies that you're absorbing will lead to some more interesting ideas coming out when you get to generate your own game ideas. Rule number two. Look under every stone. Simply look beyond films, TV, creative mediums for ideas. Look at newspapers, books, your own life, your own experiences, and use some of those things to generate better ideas. For example, on the left, the NASA astronaut Lisa Marie Novak. Google her. Find out about her life. It's incredibly interesting. In fact, I think they are actually trying to make a movie of it this year. And on the right, a personal one from my own life. Um, it sounds really strange, but I bear a parceling resemblance to this guy here, Ampan Man. He's Japan's answer to Mickey Mouse. He's a massively popular character. And every time I've worked in Japan, people stop me in the street and point me out and you know, it's the weirdest experience. And some way, somehow, I'm sure that will influence some idea I have for a game or a product in the future. And you can see already my creative mind map here is starting to look a little bit weird, a little bit non-generic, like some crazy ideas are going to come out from it. And number three is follow your nose. When you find something interesting, uh, don't just focus on that, but explore around that area. For example, on my mind map, I've got that new Hulk comic 
that's really interesting to me. It's got an old school horror vibe. So it might lead me to explore uh, things that are connected to it. And that might lead you to get into an old vintage Bernie Wrightson Hulk comic, which then makes you interested in Bernie Wrightson. You start looking at Swamp Thing and then you go back further in time to some of the really dark, horrific EC comics in the 40s and 50s. And then before you know it, you're coming up with some art style that you would never have thought about if you hadn't followed your nose down that path. So it's a way of refreshing your influences. And number four builds directly from that. It's Kill the Past. This is Blade Runner. It's a very good film. But when I was a kid, every film student I knew, they all wanted to make low budget versions of Blade Runner. They had such a big influence. And if you don't go and get new influences on top of the ones that really form some of your ideas, then your ideals will become stale over time. Do all that. And as these ideas come flying into your head, something interesting will start to come out. And if you're still stuck for ideas, you can always try number five, which is play random games. Here's a simple game I play if I'm stuck with a design idea, a concept idea, and I need a, an interesting solution. Firstly, take a book. It can be any book. I've chosen Cormac McCarthy's The Road, but choose any book. You don't have to even like that book. It could be the dictionary. Then choose four random numbers, and they can be any number. The only restriction is that the first three numbers can't be higher than the number of pages in the book, and the fourth number can't be higher than the average number of words on a page. The first three numbers are page numbers, and the fourth number is the word number on the page you will choose. So, the first word will be the 36th word on page 45. The second word will be the 36th word on page 98. And the third word will be the 36th word on page 110. And what three words did I get? Around, road, and help. So I then have to use those three random words as a phrase, individually, any way I want to help me come up with an idea or a character, whatever design problem I'm struggling with. And in this case, it actually reminded me of the last season of Fear the Walking Dead, where there's a massive plot where people are leaving um, food and supplies by the edge of the road. It's around road help, which in turn reminded me of Lenny James, who plays Morgan in Fear the Walking Dead, and that he'd played another character in a show called Save Me, where he has this great yellow puffer jacket, and that I'd said to some friends, I've always wanted to have a character um, who looked like that in a game. So you can see just that one little exercise has created some interesting ideas for me to consider for future things I might want to do with some concepts and some games. And if you like that kind of thing, you might want to spend a little bit of time studying this kind of thing more with number six, lateral thinking. So if you find it useful, you can have a look at this book. It's Lateral Thinking by Edward de Bono. It's all about playing games to think outside the box and kind of free your mind to think in creative ways. And we're not going to go into it now, but you can see here, there's loads of little games you can do to help yourself have better ideas more frequently. So there you have it. Energy in, energy out. Look under every stone. Follow your nose. Kill the past. Play random games. Lateral thinking. If you follow some or all of them, I guarantee you will start having better, more exciting, more original ideas.